Good afternoon, I'm Shane Masters with the Midday News. A special welcome if you're watching on OneSpotMedia.com. The Court of Appeal this morning overturned the conviction of former Senior Superintendent of Police, James Forbes. In its ruling, read by President of the Court of Appeal, Patrick Brooks, the $800,000 fine that was imposed on the former senior cop must be handed over immediately. Forbes appealed his 2014 conviction for corruption. In May of that year, he was fined $800,000 or six months in prison after he was convicted for attempting to pervert the course of justice. He was found guilty by a parish court of destroying a case file prepared against Tanquil boss Bruce Bicknell, who was accused of offering a bribe to a policeman to quash a traffic ticket. Mr. Bicknell was later freed of the charge. During the appeal hearing, Forbes's legal team said that there was no evidence the former senior cop was engaged in any corruption and the judge misdirected herself on the law in finding him guilty. In the meantime, Mr. Forbes says he's delighted at the outcome of his appeal. Speaking on Radio Jamaica's hotline with Emily Shees earlier today, he said he had the utmost confidence in his legal team. I was also confident in, 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 in what in my heart I knew was the, the process and uh, the decisions that were made. And um, very happy for the decision. It has been a load to carry, you know, um, for the, the number of years, near nine years. <laughs> and... Um, the a reputation I've built, I've, I've built up in, 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 the, in the JCF and in my, in my, in my service. And, uh, you know, a, a service I have given with, as you have put it, and, you know, with, with, with delight, with, with dedication and, and commitment. And therefore, was obviously delighted that my name was cleared, which is paramount for me. Mr. Forbes says he was deeply wounded following his conviction in 2014 upon by, by many as a role model for, 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 for Jamaican young men. And and for that parish to be on my repetition was for me a significant wound. I was deeply wounded. I was I was I was um, concerned for my, my, my family, my, my kids who had me as their role model who were were wounded. And um, that to me was, was even a heavy a load to carry. So, of course, you know, um, those were issues that were of great concern to me. Now to some COVID-related news. 204 new COVID-19 cases from 831 samples were reported yesterday. This represents a positivity rate of 24.5%. Their ages range from 2 years to 99 years. Kingston and St. Andrew recorded 69 cases, followed by St. Catherine with 63, while 17 were confirmed in Manchester. The country's overall case count now stands at 22,471. The health ministry says 228 people have been hospitalized with a respiratory illness. Of that number, 24 are critically ill and 21 are moderately ill. Meanwhile, Jamaica recorded three new COVID-19 deaths yesterday, pushing the death toll to 413. The number of active cases now stands at 8,608. Tourism Minister Edmund Bartlett is calling for a united approach to the global distribution of COVID-19 vaccines. His call comes amid a growing concern that developed countries like the United States and the United Kingdom are hoarding supplies of vaccines, while developing countries like Jamaica are not being given access to the vaccines. Speaking on Morning Agenda on Power 106 FM today, Mr. Bartlett said that this could pose a challenge to economic recovery for countries that depend on tourism. Those who are going to fly now, who are vaccinated, want to go to destinations where there is a level of coverage and that uh, the vast majority of the people are vaccinated. So very soon, and, and you know, you can expect that as night for the day, you're going to be tiered. You're going to be put into category one, category two, category three, and five as to those who are um, COVID compliant and as to those who are um, have, have health security and as to those who are fully vaccinated or not. And so they are going to be saying, I am not sending my citizens to be exposed to destinations that are not vaccinated. More than 100 countries have access to the COVID-19 vaccines. 
However, Mr. Bartlett lamented that there is great disparity in the global distribution. He explained that while the U.S. and other wealthy nations have begun to vaccinate their citizens against COVID-19, developing countries are yet to receive vaccine supplies. Some international world body, whether it is the WHO, the UN, somebody has got to take a stand in this regard to safeguard and protect the future of the global experience because we are going to go into a possible uh, world war situation if we're not careful over this very matter. A senior medical doctor is warning there will be more deaths if the government is not able to quickly address the shortage of staff to deal with COVID-19 patients. Jamaica has been reporting a spike in COVID-19 cases, hospitalizations and deaths over the last two weeks. Infectious Diseases Consultant at the University Hospital of the West Indies, Dr. Kathy and Pate Robinson, says with hospitals running out of COVID-19 beds, more resources are needed. The surge continues and there is no relief in terms of additional nurses and doctors, additional spaces or institutions or supplies. More people are going to die. That's a reality that we won't be able to escape if we don't scale up the services that are needed. However, she says finding staff will be a challenge. The field hospital hasn't really been able to open this yet, and part of the challenge is likely the lack of staff to station there to take care of the patients who would come, and that's a problem nationally. So we need to find a way around that. I know that there is a lot of effort going into getting additional nurses and physicians to take care of the patients, but it is slow in coming. And it's time for a break here on the Midday News. Stay with us. More stories when we return. Welcome back. Continuing the news. Jamaica could start receiving COVID-19 vaccines next week. India's High Commissioner today announced the arrival of COVID-19 vaccines as a gift to Jamaica. TVJ News has been informed that about 50,000 doses of the AstraZeneca vaccine are due to arrive. The Indian High Commissioner made the announcement while handing over medication valued at 100 million US dollars to the Health Ministry. The Sexual Harassment Bill 2020 proposes that employers protect employees from harassment at the workplace. However, in this week's meetings, the Parliamentary Committee reviewing the bill encountered a challenge regarding whom to hold accountable for third-party harassment. Herman Green reports. Under the Sexual Harassment Bill 2020, an employer is required to implement measures to protect employees from harassment while on the job. That was straightforward for the Joint Select Committee reviewing the bill as it relates to fellow employees and management. However, at Wednesday's meeting, consideration of measures in relation to harassment from customers, such as a diner hitting on a waitress in a restaurant, sent the legislators into a tailspin. An employer would not have expected that the, the patron is going to harass his staff. What does then what would be envisaged as a reasonable step to protect the, um, the employee? Apart from saying from the policy, apart from the public education aspect of it, I don't know that there could be anything done in anticipation of harassment. I don't MPC, know. Yes. MPC plus. So, uh, so after the fact, I am I, I can see clearly. A gentleman came in today to sign up a needs form. And I heard him saying, boy, I saw the MP did sexy in a real life. I saw this, look how the secretary is sexy. What up here, sexy people? Now, in a case like that, if, if who is responsible? What is my role as the employer? While that was still being considered, at Thursday's meeting, members agreed to reconsider the $1 million fine ceiling for entities found in breach of the law by not acting upon a complaint. A million dollars for a small business owner is very different than for, for some than, than what it would be for someone who is listed on the stock exchange. 
and, and, and not the junior stock exchange. On one hand, I think we could bankrupt the small business owner and we could also allow the large business enterprise. Exactly. Can exactly. To get away with Exactly. Knowledge. And may I suggest members then that we go for a corporate three million and, and certainly uh, over time, if we feel that we need to be um, to increase it, the, by order, the minister can do so. The suggestion was accepted and so will be recommended in the final report to Parliament. It's been almost four years since Mount Salem and St. James has been under a zone of special operation, so so. Despite the measure, Councillor for the Division, Kerry Thomas, says murders in the area are still too high. Over the last four months, we have had three murders within the zone itself, gun murders, right, that took place in September, in November, and in December. We have also had murders that are related to the zone, just outside the zone of members within the zone. We have had shooting up to two weeks ago in Clark Street, where man, um, gunmen run into homes in the middle of the day, and that is within the boundary of the zone. Mr. Thomas is questioning the effectiveness of the measure and raised concerns about complacency among the security forces. He said residents are living in a heightened state of fear and both the Prime Minister and Security Minister needed to review the measure. Zone of special operation in Mount Salem need a significant review at this stage because residents are in a tense situation. In my opinion, it's a time bomb waiting to explode and we need to have this, in, this zone really, really looked at as to how we really influence it in a better way to the, to the communities and citizens of Mount Salem. In news from the region, the, Baham the Bahamian police are questioning a Jamaican woman in connection with the stabbing death of another woman on the weekend. The incident occurred on Sunday. More from Eyewitness News. Well, an island-wide manhunt, manhunt rather, has been launched by police for wanted suspect Shandia Beckford, also known as Star, for murder. The Jamaican national is of brown complexion and her address and other particulars are unknown at this time. Now a woman purporting to be Beckford went live on social media last night claiming that the alleged incident between her and another female where a man was also killed on Monday night through Finlinson Street, was in self-defense. He's not my mother or my dad. Don't put your hand on me. And if you're dead, i sorry you're dead because I didn't mean to do it. I was defending myself, okay? So if you're dead, i sorry. I made a so rest in peace because I never mean to kill you. I de they must say, me give you much stab. I don't give you no much stab. I give you two stabs, so the f*** you dead. I give us two stab. Two stab. A beautification project is being undertaken at the community of Angels in St. Catherine at a cost of $2 million. Member of Parliament for North Central St. Catherine, Natalie Nita, says the project will not only enhance the look of the area, but will also increase market value of homes in the community. To enhance and uplift, that's the aim of constructing a new sign and a rock garden at the Angels Roundabout. Chief Administrator of Predi's General Construction, Quedo Letts, gave details on the sign. The sign will be one of the illuminated signs that illuminates at night, so it will be visible from any distance that you, you can see from and it will be illuminated by the reflection from the lights from motor vehicle from any direction. As for the garden, there will be assorted plants, but with any lush vegetation, maintenance is necessary. The, the community heads of association who you have witnessed here today have all agreed that they will play their part in assisting with the maintenance of the garden because that was something that we were also very concerned about. Once you put it in and it's pretty and then everybody gone, then it, it, langues, it you know, languages, languages after that. But they have stepped up. They have environmental clubs at Angels Grove and they themselves, the churches in the community, have also pledged their support in ensuring the maintenance of the garden. President of the Angels Community Development Committee, Morris Taylor, welcomed the project. And it will boost morale. It will make us feel happy to come home. 
for those who work outside and have to come here, and for those who come to shop, as well as our visitors passing by, it will be an enhancement for the program, for the area. The project, which is sponsored by the Tourism Product Development Company, TP Deco, is scheduled to begin on Monday, March 1, and is expected to be completed within four weeks. Cody and Barrett, TVJ News. In news overseas, Russian state media is reporting that opposition figure Alexei Navalny has been transferred from a Moscow detention center to a penal colony. The exact location and name of the penal colony was not revealed. More from the CNN. Well, lawyers for Russian opposition leader Alexei Navalny say he's now being moved from a jail here in Moscow and is presumably en route to a penal colony somewhere else in the country. Navalny, of course, who survived a horrific nerve agent poisoning last year and recovered in Germany, was arrested when he returned to Russia last month and jailed for two and a half years. A Moscow court finding that he violated the terms of an earlier suspended sentence by being out of the country for too long when he was sick. The opposition leader's chief of staff says neither Navalny's lawyers nor his family know where he's been moved to yet, but a prisoner monitoring group in Russia tells CNN he's due to be sent to what's called a general regime penal colony, which is one of the most common types of prison in Russia, where inmates live in dorms, not cells, and can work if they choose to do so. The transfer comes days after the human rights group Amnesty International handed pro-Kremlin critics of Navalny a propaganda victory by stripping the opposition figure of his prisoner of conscience designation, citing concerns about anti-migrant statements that Navalny made more than a decade ago. Uh, in its defence, Navalny says none of its past statements justify his current detention, and they say they're continuing to demand for his immediate release. News now in sports. At least one stakeholder at Cayman Spark is calling for the Jamaica Oaks to be reinstated to this year's racing calendar. This as local prom promoters of horse racing, SVREL, has added two more races to the traditional classic prep races, one of which will be run on the date which had been set for the Oaks. Here's Denise Walters. The Jamaica Oaks, which is a classic event confined to native-bred three-year-old fillies, but not a part of the Triple Crown series, continues to be a bone of contention this season between SVRL and the stakeholders. The promoters had proposed the changing the distance of the event from 10 furlongs to 8.5 furlongs. But chairman of the Jamaica Racing Commission, Clovis Metcalf, had told TVJ Sports that unless the owners and trainers agreed, the JRC would not sanction the race for the proposed distance. In addition, SVRL in January changed the date for the Jamaica Oaks from June 5 to May 1. However, with two new races added to this year's calendar, the inaugural Portmore and Kingston Cups for Grade 2 Phillies and Colts and Geldings respectively, going seven and a half furlongs, the Oaks is now very doubtful as the Portmore Cup is set for Saturday, May 1. That has prompted Howard Hamilton, owner of 2017 Jamaica Oaks winner Marlene My Love, to ask the promoters to rethink their decision. I'm disappointed that SVR yet has, has cancelled the, 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 the Phillies Oaks race. More than, as a breeder, more than 50% of our foals that are born are Phillies and they need big races. We need a 10 furlong race like the Oaks to determine that to the breeder which of those Phillies can produce horses that stay because everybody wants to win the mile and a half race of Derby. That's their key race to win. Unless they can produce steers who can breed back to steers, you're not going to produce a Derby winner. So for him to have removed the Oaks is a major disappointment to us. And we are begging him, beseeching him on our knees that he reintroduces back the Phillies Oaks race as part of the classic program. However, speaking at a press conference on Wednesday at Cayman Park to announce the preparations for the classic season, Chairman of SVRL Solomon Sharp says no such decision has been made. We were here to announce the lead up to the Triple Crown and the Triple Crown races. We have not announced anything of any such thing of a cancellation. So we do appreciate what Mr. Hamilton and the owners and the trainers and everyone is saying. More announcements to come. 
With the additional two races to the calendar, SVRL has dubbed the six classic prep races as Road to the Triple Series. The other races include the usual preps, the Hotline Stakes for Phillies, the Sir Howard Stakes for Colts and Geldings, as well as the Thornbird Stakes for Grade 2 Phillies and the Prince Consort Stakes for Grade 2 Colts and Geldings. Denise Walters for TVJ Sports. And that's the Midday News. I'm Shane Masters. Join us at 7 for Primetime News. On behalf of the news, sports and production teams, good afternoon.